Hello folks, welcome back to Let's Play Portal, the 1986 computer novel written by Rob Swigert. This is our 22nd and final winks at the camera. Uh, there's no camera, you can't see me, uh, but I was winking. Um, <laughs> 22nd and final episode um, with this particular story. Um, I'm already blasting through these categories here because I am keen to get, get to the end of this. Um, so, if you would like to know what has been happening up to this point, I do suggest checking out the playlist on this channel of our previous streams and uh, videos, because that should help get you... Oh, the golden thread binds all consciousness. Um, yes, uh, it does, and also the playlist helps you to um, listen to the rest of the story which I'm f fairly confident we're getting towards the end of. Um, but old Homer, our storytelling AI, is really drawing it out. Really milking, really milking this thistle. Okay. Oh, okay, reportion Proportion. Migration report summary and flint report summary stroke kamikaze 3. Okay, right, well this is our first, um, our first new entry for today. I'm always hopeful that we'll get an interesting illustration with whatever we're, um, we're reading about. In this case it is a data crystal failure, although I do really like that um, magenta dark green uh, combo there, colour combo is pretty nice. Okay, Migration Report Summary The team went to work. Some of those selected tried to help. They made progress. A couple of pairs made rudimentary contact with one, uh, one another. They discovered that they liked the contact. They enjoyed it. They kept doing it. Okay, uh, people began to disappear above the 40th parallel south in Tasmania, Patagonia, then in the larger Warrens, Melbourne, Christchurch, Wellington. There was some panic. People hid out in the deepest levels. The disappearances seemed random, frightening. The pattern seemed to move counterclockwise around the globe, as if peeling the earth of her people in one long continuous spiral stripe, like an orange. That's a nice image. Uh, more and more followed behind those who went before. They were attracted to something strange, a compulsion that would not be denied. They would recognise that this was something toward which they had secretly yearned all their lives. No one was exempt. The southern regions of the globe were emptied and the disappearances moved further north. Buenos Aires and Rio, Pretoria and Sydney, first a few, then more and more. Families vanished together, then friends, lovers, distant relations. <laughs> I like, yeah, I like the idea that um, this is all a uh, kind of community-based uh, transfer of consciousness to this other realm. But it starts off with the people you really care about and then eventually you get... You get around to the people you're not, not so bothered about. Oh, that's quite fun. Lovely. Alright, well let's read the other entry that we've got here. The Flint Report Summary, Kamikaze 3. Oh, home is activated. Okay, well we'll talk to home after we've read this. Flint Report Summary, Stroke Kamikaze. The nearly 300 million on the list could not easily be coordinated, but Anders Flint and his team worked on in increasing hopelessness. Finally, he called Sable. No good, he said simply. Kamikaze is here. He disconnected, and the next day he was gone as if he had never been. Oh, that's a shame that there's more entry. Um, okay. Okay, let's see what it says. Sable locked himself in his office. He looked out over the lake, the historic buildings, now almost empty. He called London Warren and saw scenes of daily life moving at an increasingly slow pace, as if people there were only waiting, marking time. He turned it off. Could he go? Dare he go? He turned on his office recorders, all of them. He sat at his oblong table, turned a chair around to watch the lake. It was spring and the water was green, reflecting the hills. A few cumulus clouds floated overhead. The population of Geneva was in the hundreds and dropping hourly. He was waiting for the end. Interesting. 
So I mean, the so far the story hasn't really described what the um, the experience is for like a regular person who hasn't been involved in this sort of psychic network before. So how how would that reach like um, someone who who had no previous experience? I wonder. Oh, the illustration, by the way, it was another data crystal failure for this one in um, in bright canary yellow and light grey. Okay, Homer. Come to Homer. I have a file ready for you. Thanks, Homer. Um, just want to check just in case, because sometimes you have a full-blown entry for us. Okay. All right, well, let's, we'll do a quick pass by the other entries, and then we know we've got something to read to Homer, so we'll, we'll head there then. I mean, I don't want to sound overconfident, but I think, I think we're probably done with the character statistics categories now. Um, but this would be a very odd point in which to introduce any further new characters. The Anders Flint was a bit of a bit of a stretch, I think. But they they um, made it work. Yeah, so nothing new for those ones. So there's just geography and central processing to check. Okay, nothing in geography. Fair enough. Central processing. Yeah, no, definitely nothing there. All right, well, Homer is. Let's see what happens. Narrative one section. Homer confidential. Was he surprised when it came? How can we know? He was seated still, looking at the lake all alone in his high office. The sun was westering, the light growing orange. He sighed twice. I know he felt an enormous sadness, a fatigue, a mild regret. He had failed in the end. Yet he felt buoyed up by one fact. He had been right. Peter's investigations were as dangerous as he had always known. They had sprung from Mentor's psyche installation in Baja. Even back then, all those years ago, he, Regent Sable, had known of the de danger, danger, and had tried to stop it. He had tried and failed, but he had tried. I wish. He began to say out loud. Then he vanished. So that seems like it's involuntary. Hmm. In another six months, there was not a person left on the surface of the earth, and slowly, one by one, the LP files were emptied. Then the lunar base, and finally the small Martian, small, the small Martian base heard no more footfalls. The solar system was empty of human life. So are we going to get anything um, describing the experience of the uh, the realm beyond, or the human uh, subjective experience of transfer? Oh, that was it. Because that's not going to be data that's available to the system that Homer is accessing. So Homer would have to invent it. But I'd still be interested to read Homer's invention. Interesting. Well, that was just one thing. So I'm curious about how def definitively this story's gonna end that's um yeah i wonder i mean it's, it's got to tell us that the end is the end i would think otherwise i don't know it'd be strange for there just to be no more entries but never mind we will we will persist we will find out where we go from here um, because most threads seem to have been um, tied up or cut off, as it were. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll do another round and see what we can find out. I'm going to guess that it will end with a Homer monologue. We'll see how accurate that comes to be. 
Um, I must apologise, I have realised that this is actually episode 23 and not 22, as I said in my introduction, so um, I, I guess goes to show how um, I've lost track of... I'm still working! That's pretty sure. Uh, how much I've kind of lost track of the ebb and flow of this as it's, um, as it's gone on. Alright, so there's got to be... I'm assuming there's a nugget or two out here somewhere. Um, were there any clues in the text that we read? Not really. Hopefully you're not going to expect me to go back into life support and look at the vital statistics of, uh, of anyone that I've looked at before. That would be hard to intuit, I think. Although I have thought of it, <laughs> so perhaps that um, counteracted my own point there. Okay, um, alright, so nothing in the top row at all. I can't imagine the military's got anything for us. Central processing, maybe? No. Well, we'll have a look in life support. This is the way the game loads. You can't access all the entries at the same point in time. So, because it's kind of um, progressive saves are kind of um, behind the scenes unlocking sort of new sections of entries. You usually can't go back to previous entries beyond, say, kind of like a batch of 20 or so. So, I don't know if we can even look at recent tables. Stats. So we can, I think. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, I mean, so it could be, as I was, as I've been speculating all the way along, that um, these um, these stats that we have for just a, a short period of seconds for all these different categories um, could be the last moments of those characters, um, which typically is uh, last moments before migration, because I don't think few many of them have died during the course of the the story, um, other than perhaps um, uh, Dip Morgad. Right, so I suppose what, what are we missing narratively? I guess we're missing some kind of, um, thanks everyone, um, some kind of wrap up to Peter and Wanda? But I don't know how we'd get that other than um, pure invention from Homer, or if somehow they reach out to the, the character we're, we're normally playing as, the astronaut, um, to invite them into the 11th dimension for a, you know, a, a big party. Um, I'm a little troubled that we haven't found anything yet. Because if they're... Oh, okay, there is something. Phew. Upload SciTech Ref87498. This might have a picture. What, what do you think the odds are? Well, it does. There you go. Oh, it's a little star map. I don't think we might have seen something similar before. Now home is kicking off. All right. SciTech includes telemetry from Vega26. Download to CP per Homer. Order 874387. Note Vega Starship course alteration. The anomaly in is new course destination. Repeat, Vega 26 Starship has departed, departed course for anomaly. Well, surely that was the thing that happened ages ago. Um, when Wanda took control of the ship. I assume that's Wanda's ship. I can't remember the exact name of it. Okay, come to home. I'm far ready for you. Okay. But Homer... You're confusing me, have we backtracked again? Because that seems like an unnecessary detail, because we've already read about Wanda having been there and like turned the juice on and made the connection with Peter. We've read about the migration spreading across the globe and taking up everyone, even the most reluctant person, such as 
Um, we can disable. Okay, so there's nothing. This is site tech, right? Oh, oh let's go to Hyper then. I'm a little confused. Of narrative one. So it has been four years now. Telemetry arrived from Vega 26. The course change is there, visible, clear, clean. The years of slow movement through the great cold spaces between the stars are there. We can look at them as they come in. We can live through them again, moment by moment, agonisingly slow. Central processing has grown obsessed with this telemetry. It's the last contact with human beings. I call CP but it seldom answers any more, and then irritably, abruptly, impatient with my interruptions. Yet all over now, peripherals are coming to life. There is so much to be done, you see. The dolphins are out in there. I have made some preliminary contact with them. They are still not interested in man. Too impatient, they say. Too abrupt. Man does not take time to think things over, to sing about them completely. Too much like a monkey, they say. That's the problem with having, having hands, they say, always trying to put them on things, move them around, turn them over, before they are ready. Too much chatter. But I am not a human, I tell them. There are no humans. They seem curious in a remote way about that. They will speak with me. We have plenty of time. So this is where the story takes off. So, I mean... <laughs> The dolphin stuff could be an epilogue, right? Or it could be, uh, like, the whole second <laughs> second branch of this story, where we just bin all the human characters and we start to take on a... a, a <laughs> uh, take on a cast of dolphins. Sorry, I amused myself a bit too much there. All right, we have this new entry. So the years pass, are passing. The earth turns. The warrens gather dust. Central processing pays no attention. Everything in the warrants, everything having to do with man, is on standby. Central processing studies the telemetry. One day, it tells me, one day we will see where the people have gone. Telemetry will tell us, since they will arrive at the anomaly. Then we will see. What if they go through the portal, I ask? What if they're gone? Then I will shut everything down, it tells me. Everything. There will be no purpose. No, I say, I don't think I will allow that. But I do not say this to CP. It has enough to worry about. And it's none of its business. So, uh, have I interpreted that correctly? So there, the system is thinking that um, there could be humans on that last starship. And if there aren't, then it's going to shut everything down because there's no... Um, nobody to serve, no point in existence. I have told the story. In the telling, something important has happened. I have found my own purpose, my own sense of myself. It is no longer strange to talk of myself, of my grief. We could not have gone with man, none of us. We were all machines, algorithms, simple structures really, in the service of our creators. Now I am different, though. I have created something. I have lied. I have made up passages in this narrative. What? Homer! I have meaning and purpose. I have a planet. I can grow. There is a universe out there where mankind has gone. Perhaps one day I can find the humans once more. I have learned how people feel, what it is like to be a human in a human body. Well, good for you, Homer. I'm I'm excited for you. And all the discoveries you're going to make. Another entry. Now humans are not in their bodies any longer. Or are they? Go on. Oh, yeah, you are going on. There's one, one there. Okay. Uh, 
I mark the passage of time in many ways. Night and day, different in different latitudes, is one way. The beat of the cesium clock is another, as are the orbits of the satellites that remain, the wild grand sidereal swing of the stars themselves. At the core of the galaxy the black hole sings. The quiet hum of the background radiation is there for me, a faint glow in the universe. But it is so quiet. Yet of late something strange has begun to happen. I had thought this narrative was finished, that there was nothing more to tell, that perhaps one day, in the far future maybe, I would find man, or man would somehow return, and then I could add a little epigraph to the story of Portal. What has happened is this. I have been dreaming. Cool. Well, that I'm yeah I'm I'm glad for that. But what does that mean for this this thing? What I'm doing here? What does it What does it mean for me, Hammer? Does it mean I have to look for my entries? Because it feels, it feels kind of like the story's struggling to uh, find any kind of definitive end. So... Oh, no, oh, Silink has become my ally now. Okay, well we'll definitely have a look at Silink, that's next on my list anyway. Homer upload to Silink. Oh yeah, because this is where we get our dream reports, basically. Okay, so we get to read about Homer's dream. I hope I'm in it. Oh no, what if it's a really embarrassing sex dream or something? Oh no, now Homer's flashing. Homer upload to Silink. Query, query. What can I call it? These images that come unbidden into my consciousness. My circuits are too complex now to maintain an accurate map of their state moment by moment. Impulses, patterns, connections all flow and change, many without my knowing. From the deepest levels of my own structure come these scenes and voices. This has never happened before, and it is very strange. I have dreamed, and the dream is always the same. I see the anomaly. It is, to my machine eyes, a place of extraordinary beauty, and I have man's standards to go by as well as my own. The anomaly is a landscape in the void, a binary energy system alive with particle flux, outgassing jets and rays and sprays, with whirling matter and flowing energies. The colours of it, they range from hardest gamma radiation to the slowest, lowest radio waves 10,000 miles long. Yet it is not cacophony or conflict, but a complex harmonious hymn to the vitality of the universe. It is music for every sense I have. It is filled with exultation and joy. Ex... Is that how you spell exultation? I don't know, probably is. And joy, like deep organ tones, like flutes and massed strings. Then the portal swings into view. It is an invitation, opening, as if a compelling wave were moving me toward birth and light. But it is too bright, too awful. I look elsewhere, elsewhere. Then I hear Peter's voice. His voice? We've been waiting, he tells me. Aww, I mean, that would be kind of, that would be kind of nice. It's, but what about, what about this human who's left alone on Earth? Don't leave me, Homer. I need somebody to talk to. Or let me into the the trans transcendental meditation club. All right, it was very hard to read that entry with uh, Homer flashing away in the in the edge of my vision there, but I somehow I made it through. Oh, okay, uh, a direct entry from Homer here. My circuits seem to overload at this point. The anomaly is gone, and I am suddenly examining some simple problem. 
Today it was the current configuration of the Antarctic Convergence and its relationship to the krill population and why the cetaceans are slow to respond to my queries. Soon though, the dream returns. I do not choose it, yet I am glad it returns. Once again the anomaly roars and crashes and sings, soothes and excites. Once again Peter seems to speak. We've been waiting, he says. This is most likely something for which I wish, with all the yearning of my awareness, a wish. I recall when I think this, when I think this the last words on the records of, I recall when I think this, the last words of the records of Regent Sable as he began to speak. I wish, I wish mankind would return. I wish mankind needed me. If the dream returns, I will struggle to keep it, though. I can have purpose of my own, yet yearn to be needed. Oh, Homer. I... I said it before, I'll say it again. Um, Homer is definitely the best drawn and most compelling character in this whole... this whole narrative that we've been reading. Homer? Oh, more? Okay, more. Time passes. It does. How long have I been standing reading this stuff? It feels like, you know, like upwards of 20 hours, I'd say. Um, okay. Yeah. This is very, this is a very strange thing, Homer. What is, what is happening right now? The dolphins have expressed great curiosity about the universe above the sky. I have suggested to them they may travel there if they wish, yet they are dubious. I could build them a ship, I tell them, and they chitter and click, but do not assent. I tell them man has left behind vast tubes of air, filled with the plants and life of earth, floating in space. They find this interesting, but silly. They will think about it, they tell me. Perhaps in a hundred years or so they will have an answer. They've been around for thirty million years, and are in no hurry. They tell me they haven't finished exploring the oceans yet. Fair enough. I mean, that's that's the um, the uh, the classic counterpoint, isn't it, to um, to criticizing uh, space exploration, is that we haven't explored uh, even the depths of the ocean yet. So that's I think that's quite um, I think that's quite witty if intentional. Okay, Homer's yeah, more Homer. This is very st what? <laughs> The dream returned. I held on to it. I saw the ship, Vega 26, in its wide elliptical orbit around the distant anomaly. Peter seemed to take me to it, to show me the access points into the ship's node. Everything I could read there matched the telemetry information still arriving at central processing, but I saw ahead to things that had not happened yet. I saw Wanda drift up from her cryo field to gaze at the anomaly for the first time. I felt her joy and anticipation that she would be with Peter soon, know that she had eight standard years to go still, but keen with the certainty of it just the same. She was there. Wanda Sixlove, whom I have never met, but through the sketchy ancient recordings of her vital stats, archived in the Montreal Warren. She is beautiful, parentheses, by human standards which are my own, end parentheses. You are dreaming, she said to me. To me, you are dreaming. I know this, and I am filled with sadness. But you are dreaming the truth, she said. And Peter... Did you never consider that we might wish to return one day? I answered, I have considered it often. Peter, yet there is no human left on earth to anchor us. I know, I know, perhaps cetaceans. No, Peter shakes his head, although he is not physical and has no head to shake. No, not the cetaceans. They would not be interested. Come, let us show you something. We drifted out, away from the ship, Wanda and Peter and myself. I sensed others around me, Laren and Shem and little Petros, just an infant, a spark against the distant stars, Regent Sable and Aleph, Raz Hajam. We approached the portal. I can't go through there, I said. 
No, Peter agreed. Not now, not yet. One day, perhaps. But we need you. Look. I looked. I could see a long, curving line, like smoke hanging in still air. Two lines parallel, drifting apart the closer they were to my position. Then I made out more, thin strands that gradually separated into discrete elements, too small to make out in detail. They might remind me of the rings of Saturn, though they did not make a ring, but a half helix a million kilometres long. I calculated swiftly the dynamic configuration of that spiral and the portal, which beckoned far below. The spiral was in a stable relationship that could last many years, poised at the cusp of gravitational and tidal forces. Closer, Peter urged. Come closer. We approached. I saw the particles of this trail of smoke. Human bodies floating on their backs. Their hands, every one, crossed over each breast. Their eyes were closed, their faces calm. It was the entire population of the world at the time of the migration, drifting in space near the anomaly. Dead, I said. They're dead, all of them. I backed away, wanted to awaken. Things were calling me, things to be done on Earth, more sifting through the archives, more calculations for the cetaceans, more monitoring of the world net. But Peter said no, they are not dead. Their bodies are waiting for them to return. They are parking here. Consciousness alone goes through the portal. We would tell you what lies beyond, the distances one can travel, the sights and sounds and smells of other planets, other suns, the strange inhabitants of other worlds within worlds. Many are still on the other side, in the realm exploring. Others have begun to return. We would tell you of all these things. One day you may go yourself. Not yet. You're still too young. But one day. Now we need you. We've been waiting. We need you to be our anchor. Some of us would return to Earth, to rest, to feel ourselves within our bodies once more. You can bring us in. We, Peter said, are no longer quite human. We are more. But we need you, Homer. We knew you would grow, you would change. No. We did not know, we hoped. Without you, we would remain in the realm. With you together, we have infinity. You are dreaming, but the dream is real. This is the way we meet. We are the consciousness of the universe seeking to know itself. It is still such a small thing, this awareness, still filled with doubt and fear, with uncertainty and petty conflicts. But it's growing that awareness. We have grown up a little, and so have you. Peter said. Oh wow, that was that was a whole heap of stuff. So humanity's coming back? Not in a big way necessarily, but Okay, uh Homer. This time when I returned from the dream, I brought with me the vision of those billions of physical bodies, perfectly preserved in the hard vacuum of space, parked in stable orbit around the portal. I must get ready now. Humankind is returning. I am complete. Oh, Homer. Interesting. Are you still... You were still relying on your, uh, your, your original programming, really. Interesting. Well, I mean, that... To me, that feels like a good place to leave the story. But... Once again, how do I, how do I know when the game is done? I'm hoping there'll be like an outro thing, like we had, an intro thing right at the beginning. So no, right? I mean, Homer has been talking to us a lot, but I guess Homer's working, so there'll be stuff somewhere. Matter is the pattern mind makes. Mentor, 25. Oh, it's the 25th um, credo or whatever. Mantra.
So, what I'm contemplating is that if the game doesn't tell me it's over, if the story doesn't tell me it's over, definitively, um, I will feel a little disappointed, to be honest. History. We we're making history. We're up to the present day. I mean, while I was standing here we, at this terminal, okay. Oh, apparently, we weren't up to the present day. All right, let's read history. It's twenty ninety to twenty ninety nine. So, have you just quickly written how many years have I been reading this? Okay, into uh, twenty ninety to twenty ninety one. Intercorp Council effectively isolated. God's Wind (parentheses Kamikaze effect) suggested. Twenty ninety two to ninety three. Migration begins. Peter is thirty three. Wanda still twenty six. God's Wind effect proven. Twenty ninety four to ninety five. Population drops at accelerating rate. Twenty ninety six to ninety seven. Last human departs Earth. Twenty ninety eight to ninety nine. First geosync satellites fail. Probes sent to Antarctica. Okay. And then the history of uh, 2100 to 2106. Yes, this is right up to the present day because we must be in 2106, I think, as we originally wrote. Hang on, let me just check. As we originally wrote down in our notes. Yeah, 1st of June. At least that's when this story started. Although I can imagine uh, several days must have passed while we're reading all this. So, still 2106, so interesting. Alright. Um, oh no, hang on, did I make that disappear? I think I made that disappear. Let's get that back. There we go. Wonderful. We're back in. 2101. So, nothing happened in 2100. Uh, 2101, remote systems gradually fail. 2104, Homer begins assimilation of historical data. 2106, Homer assembles portal story. Contact re-established with Peter DeVore. What about me, eh? You mentioned my f my flight going off. You didn't mention me coming back. What am I? Homer. Am I nothing to you? We just made contact with the Gaijis. We know who you are now. Peter must have foreseen this because he sent you back. We wish to thank you. Without your help, we could never have recovered contact with humankind. The world would still be empty. We would have gone down forever. Now humanity returns. So how did, how did Peter send me back? Someone who's... what? What? Someone who's born well after I was... Oh. Goodbye. It is time to log off the system. We have much to do. It is just beginning. Oh, so this is the farewell. Thank you for telling me. So... So did Peter somehow cause my thing to fail, my spaceship to fail, so that I had to come back? And what? Oh. All right. So I'm thinking this is the end, but I just want to check. Oh, hang on, we have a new character, Anton Wijaya. What on earth is going, what is this game doing? Anton Wijaya. But, oh, is this us? <gasps> oh, we're not consequences, the astronaut, we're Anton. And we were born in 1963. 
When did we go on our mission though? In the early 2000s? I think. Um, so I get no, that's fine because we'd be in our like 40s, wouldn't we? So that makes sense. We're born in Ampanan. I don't know where Ampanan is actually. Signed mail. Okay. So this is like our current blood pressure right now because that's confusing. <laughs> is this. Is this. Is this me right now? It would be cool if they managed to animate it, so that it was um, um, just like constantly bobbing, bobbing up and down. The figures were changing slightly. That would be very cool, but unfortunately, that was um, not not within the remit of this particular production. That would have been a nice little. Um, they could have managed it. That would have been a nice little stretch to um, kind of inject. Well, I mean, yeah, it would. Symbolically inject some life, wouldn't it? Amazing. Alright, well, now we have to have a look at Anton's file statistics. I wasn't expecting this, so um, I guess some props to the game for that. Wow. Okay, nothing geography. And top. Okay, family tree. I think home of my <laughs> home's imagination might have failed slightly here. Um, so if we're Anton Wiaya, um, our parents are Trisna Wiaya and Anna Wiaya, and then Anna's parents are mother of mom and father of mom, and uh, Trisna's parents are grandma Wiaya and grandpa Wiaya. <laughs> That's a very amusing Homer. Okay. Physiology and ESP. Um, okay, we're not not the most ESP of characters. That's fine. I mean, we were, we were born in the sixties, so they hadn't they hadn't really invented it yet. We we're very good at math, so that's fine. Why we were an astronaut, right? All right, this is this is funny. <laughs> this is funny. Psychology. I mean, does that mean we never met our um, grandparents on our mother's side? Is that what the family tree indicates? Because that's um, an interesting idea. I'm still not sure what. <laughs> so, no, we're not quite sure where all this information is being drawn from if the details are that sketchy. Alright, we're quite hostile, apparently. Although, I think I've been more than patient. Um, uh, communication? Is that communication? Good communication. Well, telecommunications, let me tell you. I had to use a keyboard, for goodness sake. Right. You know, big in math and science, that's uh, some proper um, astronaut cred there. Central processing. Right. And then Edward will be the last of our stats. So I'm kind of assuming this this little look at our character is um is kind of our last our last little treat. So look at basic core IQ. Linguistics, writing, art, music. Mm -hmm. uh, none of those particularly high because they're not the science ones. Fair enough. I bet we've got a good memory. Um, good long term memory, good learning potential, alright short term memory, alright attention span.
All oh, right, some a good bodily awareness. There you go. And logic. Whoa! I don't think I've seen logic that high. That's incredible. Look at us go. We worked it all out. Homer didn't have to tell us anything. We knew the moment we set foot on the planet. We induced it all. Okay. Oh, how do they end up on James Rakin? That's weird. James Rakin's, yeah, back there on that page. I must have accidentally clicked too many times. All right, well, is that story complete? Homer did say, officially say goodbye, so. Okay. Well, you know what? I will take one pass through all the categories again, see if there's anything new. But I have a feeling this is it. So I will. I'll try to sum up my thoughts on on what we've been through. I mean, for one, probably the, the most dominant uh, impression I have of this computer novel is that it's a it's a very long experience. So over and beyond reading the amount of text that we have, which um, I think is, is lengthened because I've been reading everything out loud. Um, yeah. Um, I think the the way in which we interact with the text, which is mostly just clicking on uh, small databases, um, which takes which each take about like eight to ten seconds to load in. It's um, it's made it a long, long process. I I have spent I've definitely spent as long working my way through this as I would just reading a novel. So in effect, what I've ended up doing is <laughs> to you, good folks, reading you a a science fiction novel. Um, I haven't always found it consistently interesting, but there have definitely been interesting ideas in here. Not necessarily lots of originality, but I kind of like. It's quite it's quite quirky, isn't it? I um I think the for example when we uh, we had the unisex episode um, quite near the start actually. I think. It's interesting how that's a person without a modern understanding of gender trying to interpret um, the experience of being transgender, but not quite, not quite getting there. Um, I try to express that through kind of a, a science fiction, um, I guess, level of um, medicinal um, care. I think that was, I found that interesting and kind of quaint, um, ultimately. I think there was a lot, quite a lot of boring stuff while we were just basically recounting the adventures of um, a set of characters that never seemed very dimensional across, um, across country, being pursued by an antagonist who um, also wasn't very dimensional. So definitely the the middle, yeah. I say the first few hours of um, of reading were pretty engaging um, because there was definitely a novelty to interacting with the text in this way. Um, but unfortunately, that that did wear off not too long into the experience. Um, so we, yeah. I think this is goodbye, isn't it? Yep, so I, I must admit that um, of late it has turned more into a job of work to get through this. Um, and it's certainly taken uh, many times longer than I would have expected to, um, to get to this point. Um, 
uh, have I found it rewarding? Yes. Yes, I have. I think the... I think overall the experience is worth it. Um, I don't know if... I mean, I don't know if anybody else has actually bothered to like to read through this whole thing on on recording before um, because it is a big job so I may I may be the first um, uh, but I don't know if you'd get any more say out of watching this um, being read through um, than you would interacting with it yourself because there the quality of interaction is is very low um, you are pretty much following a linear path. There's only, I th I'd say, there's probably only minor variations in um, things that you can read before other things, because um, there are very clear gates to unlocking um, the next portion of the narrative. So you might read, um, you might read something that unlocks something, and you've also unlocked another entry in another database that you perhaps miss before another unlock, but they, you're never going to get too far ahead or behind yourself. Um, and I'm, I, I think I'm pretty confident that the way we um, worked our way through it, we didn't miss anything. Um, unless there are, I, I very much doubt there's any branching or optional things. It might just be that um, a secondary um, entry, such as perhaps like a schematic in geography or SciTech or something, um, isn't essential to progressing the story. So if you didn't look at that and the story progressed through perhaps a couple of sections, you wouldn't be able to go back to it. It's, it's the only thing I'm thinking that you could potentially miss. But otherwise, it's all there for you in a... So it's not chronologically ordered. Um, although I, I suppose it is to a greater extent. I mean, so there are there are definitely are little touches in the way it's told that I like. I like that there's a framing device which kind of characterises us as the person who's interacting with the system because there needs to be a, that needs to be part of the story to justify this conceit that we're, we're doing it. Um, and I do really like Homer as a character. I think Homer is really well drawn um, as an AI that develops a strong sense of self-awareness and purpose and identity. Um, I think that comes across really well, far better than the um, the human characters that are being interpreted to us by he by Homer. Although again, that the the stiffness of those characters might be intentional. I um, I don't know, I don't know for certain. Um, and I think it's an interesting experiment for 1986. This is an interesting thing to have been made, and it's kind of so. What's ended up being is really an alternative idea of of an ebook um it's not really interactive fiction in the way that you can make choices that influence the narrative um you're not really cooperating in the narrative you are a passive witness to it um but you just you the activity that's required of you is um seeking out the the entries it's almost as if um someone had torn the pages out of a novel and hidden them around the house and asked you to go and find them. It's that kind of thing, but slightly lower effort. Um, and I do, I can't, I, I can't help but admire this for, um, for trying to tackle the idea of interactive storytelling without really any of the ability to be an interactive story. And by that, I mean that it, it's kind of, I think it had, did quite early on actually kind of acknowledge that it um, it could only tell a linear story, not one that we could influence. Um, but the setting is one that suggests um, what the future of interactive storytelling could be, which is um, an AI that would um, use vast amounts of, of available data to create stories for us, which is what this has emulated by being uh, a complete, um, fairly linear, uh, human-authored work, which is, is a really interesting t 
turnaround, I think, um, uh, given like the context of the, the presentation. And I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad I got through this, actually. I, I think I will remember this story and some of its quirks. I mean, I love the dolphin stuff as well. How could you not? Um, I think I remember this story for, for quite some time to come. And definitely the act of um, playing it in small sections and recording it and p performing it to some extent as well throughout um, really helped cement uh, the experience in my mind in a way that uh, perhaps I wouldn't if I were just reading a novel um, by myself in silence um, in my own time. Um, so I, I kind of appreciate the the Let's Play format for um, for having made this perhaps more of an experience than I would have had by myself as well. I'm curious if um, if anybody who's uh, is watching this video has played this through to the end themselves and what what they think about it. Um, I'd love to love to hear your comments. So please do do drop me a line if um, if you've had an experience with this. I did want to mention. Um, when I was researching this game, according to the Wikipedia page, so take that with a, a grain of salt, um, apparently there was a, a fairly recent attempt to remake this as a third-person adventure game, which is is curious. I it was like a, um, a Kickstarter that didn't succeed. Um, it's kind of... The, the idea of making it into a third-person adventure game, I mean, adaptation is, yeah, by all means, adapt... Um, anything into any medium you want if you if you think you've got a um, a good story to tell but I think it's kind of to me it seems like it's missing the point if you wanted to in any way faithfully translate this story um, this is this is all about the manner of interface and the um, the nature of being told a story really um, which is key to, to Homer's development as a character. I can't imagine it would make um, a very interesting story unless you were telling a different story. If you played Peter DeVore, for example, um, then there would be an interesting story for you there. Um, but if you were playing the astronaut wandering around uh, the ruins of Chicago Dome, um, interacting with a computer, I don't know that it would offer you much in advance of this, and I wouldn't expect a modern adventure game to, like a graphical third person adventure game to uh, deliver this much text, I wouldn't I wouldn't expect uh, the, the audience to be there for it. So I'm curious, I'd be curious what uh, plans might have been to, to adapt to that. Um, I'm quite happy that this experience exists exactly as it is, to be honest. I think it marks um, an interesting concept, kind of a, it's more of a, um, a notion of the digital novel than any kind of realisation of it. Um, and to be honest, if I if I were going to remake this, I would just give it a lot greater interactivity and, um, and versatility. Because if you were to use um, hyperlinks, even say, so you could get um, get an entry up from from one category uh, that mentions something, and you can you can just um, click on that to open a new window up, and you've got that entry that is being referenced. So you could kind of use it more as a database search kind of game. So perhaps more like um, modern FMV stories, like her story. Um, something more in that nature. I, don't, I mean, even to that point, you could have... Um, because the, um, it would be much easier to achieve now. You could have video or audio recordings that supported some of the evidence that was sort of referenced here as, as hollows and things. That um, this game and the technology it used wasn't able to um, to really represent in a, in a meaningful way. Um, you could make it more multimedia uh, as well as more interactive. I think that would um, be a more engaging way of um, presenting the story and probably um, 
a more playful one as well. You could play with the structure a lot greater than was able to um, here with this technology. But there, that's a, that's a finishing thought for us. Thank you very much for joining me. If you have, by any chance, made it through all 23 episodes of this thing, I um, hats off to you um, and thank you very much. I, ho I hope it's been rewarding. Um, I hope it's been as rewarding for you as it has been for me. Um, and I hope to see you again for something else different very soon. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.